the last module, we had a look at the regular verbs and their endings. But of course, like in any European language, including English, there's also a whole stack of verbs which are irregular in one way or the other. The good news is that even within these irregularities, there are rules and consistencies which make them relatively easy to learn. And that's exactly what we're going to do now: point out the regularities of the irregular verbs, so that they too will feel regular in the end. Let's start with the good news. Most irregular verbs retain the same endings as the regular verbs. In other words, they're only irregular as far as their stem is concerned. You want some more good news? Okay. The second thing is that most irregular verbs only have an irregular stem in the singular, and only in the du and the er sie es forms, and they even usually have the same irregularity in their stem. If we translate all of that into actual examples with verbs like essen, lesen, fahren, etc., we get the following forms: essen, ich esse, du isst, er sie es ist, wir essen. Er ist, sie essen, sie essen. Lesen. Ich lese. Du liest. Er sie es liest. Wir lesen. Ihr lest. Sie lesen. Sie lesen. Fahren. Ich fahre. Du fährst. Er sie es fährt. Wir fahren. Er fährt. Sie fahren. Sie fahren. As you can see, all you really have to learn is the third person singular, knowing that the second person singular will have the same changed stem, and that all other forms are regular. This rule covers nearly all irregular verbs, and the remaining few are not that different either. For the time being, we'll only deal with three of these, even more irregular verbs: the all-important to be, sein, and to have, haben. And the verb to know, wissen. Let's start with sein. Sein. Ich bin. Du bist. Er sie es ist. Wir sind. Ihr seid. Sie sind. Sie sind. Sein is the most irregular verb of them all, but as it's used all the time, you'll learn it pretty well automatically. The same applies to haben. Which is only slightly irregular anyway. It just leaves out the b in the second and third form singular. Haben, ich habe, du hast, er sie es hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben, sie haben. The third verb, wissen, to know, has the same pattern in its irregularity as the modal verbs, which we're going to look at in detail in a later module. All singular forms, including the first person ich, have the same changed stem, and the first and third person have a zero ending. They just use the changed stem. The plural is regular as usual. Wissen. Ich weiß. Du weißt. Er sie es weiß. Wir wissen. Ihr wisst. Sie wissen. Sie wissen. You'll find a list of the most important irregular verbs in the digital booklet. So have a look and consult the list when doing the activities that follow. And the bad news? Well, there isn't any. But we have to tell you one more thing before we have a hit out on the practice court. There's a special form in German to give commands, instructions, or strong suggestions, which is called the imperative. Luckily, its formation is the same for most regular and irregular verbs. The second person singular, by far the most common imperative form, is formed by simply taking the stem and dropping the st ending. So we get the following forms for both regular and the majority of irregular verbs: machen, mach, do, singen, sing, sing, laufen, lauf, run, haben, hab, have. However, there are two variations to this. Firstly, verbs whose stems end in d or t add the ending e. This is actually also the slightly antiquated imperative form for all verbs, and you sometimes still see it used in formal written language. So you may still read mache, singe, 
or laufe in a book, but when speaking, you only add an e for verbs ending in d or t, such as arbeiten, arbeite, reden, rede. Secondly, the irregular verbs that change their stem from e to i or ie use the changed stem to form the imperative, but still drop the st ending, just as regular verbs do. Essen. Du isst, iss. Eat. Geben. Du gibst, gib. Give. Nehmen. Du nimmst, nimm. Take. Lesen. Du liest, lies. Read. Sehen. Du siehst, sieh. See. The plural familiar and the formal imperative forms are exactly the same as the normal forms, but we do add z in the formal form to make things extra polite. Mach die Aufgaben bitte. That's the familiar ihr form. Machen Sie die Aufgaben bitte. That's formal. Lest bitte. That's the familiar ihr form again. Lesen Sie bitte. Formal. Only the mother of all irregular verbs, sein, has special forms even in the plural. Sei still, bitte. Be quiet, please. That's singular. Seid pünktlich, bitte. Be punctual, please. That's the plural familiar. Seien Sie nicht so nervös, bitte. Don't be so nervous, please. That's formal, singular and plural. As you can see, it's common practice to soften the imperative with adding a bitte, please, at the end, especially in the formal form. Even so, German is generally more direct compared to English, which nearly always uses expressions like would you mind, could you please, or why don't you, to boss people around. Germans, therefore, often come across as abrupt and too direct if they translate their imperative straight from German into English. So don't make the same mistake in reverse, and try to translate, for example, would you mind, when making a strong suggestion to somebody in German. Instead, use the imperative form, followed by bitte, and a smile always helps. Language learning is not just about learning grammar and vocabulary. It's about expressing yourself and interaction with people in new ways, too. We told you that you'll learn some of these forms more or less automatically. But of course, that only happens if you use them a few times. So give yourself a head start by doing the following fun activities. It's your turn now.